Hi friends, in the last uh, class we understood what are the considerations uh, to be given while selecting uh, a chemical or a pesticide to be included in pest management. Fine, to continue that discussion on chemical control in IPM, one of the next important aspect is uh, the insecticide resistance development and its management. Why the insects uh, develop resistance? So that is one of the important question to be answered. In simple I have indicated here the re insecticide resistance is the development of an ability to tolerate doses of an insecticide which would prove lethal to the majority of the individuals of the normal population of the same species or in general when you repeatedly apply a particular pesticide then automatically the same species will develop some sort of tolerance to overcome this particular dosage and uh, cause economic damage which can be very clearly explained with this uh, slide photograph. You see here both uh, the susceptible ones and the resistant ones. The susceptible ones and the resistant ones in this agro ecosystem when you spray a particular insecticide to this ecosystem the susceptible one keeps on uh, uh, eliminating only the, the resistant ones which remain. So, when this population goes on increasing in the given ecosystem, even after spraying you notice in the decrease in the population, thereby the economic damage also increases. When you see the economic damage even after spraying, then you feel the insect has developed resistance. So, this is a simple concept. If you trace the history of the insecticide resistance in insects, it goes as back as uh, in 1914 uh, itself, people thought, many of the people thought with the discovery of miracle powder DDT, everybody thought that uh, the problem of pest is solved once forever. They also thought they have won the war against insects, but that statement did not remain for a long time. You know the scientists got the first jolt during 1946 itself when housefly showed resistance to this miracle powder DDT itself. So, leave aside that even as back as in 1914 before the synthesis of the synthetic insecticides or before understanding the um, insecticidal property of DDT in 1939, Melander in 1914 guessed that Sanjo's coal, Sanjo's scale insect has developed resistance to lime sulphur. He wrote an article in fact, can insects become resistant to sprays which at that time nobody gave an importance. But later on during 1941 the Colorado potato beetle developed resistance and then one of the uh, medical pest um, that is pediculus uh, during 1944 showing resistance to DDT. Then after 1946 particularly series of insects showing resistance uh, to various groups of insecticides started pouring in from different parts of the globe. The first resistance report internationally we see in case of as I said lime sulphur on uh, Sanjo scale and uh, within the country the first uh, national report of uh, resistance uh, came from uh, Singara beetle particularly on DDT and BHC from Delhi which was reported by Pradhan et al. And then I have here a list of resistant insects uh, abroad. So, starting with Sanjo's coal, um, tobacco bud uh, worm showing resistance to pyrethroids, then um, DBM uh, diamond back moth showing resistance to chlorentriprinol uh, from China, then uh, lady beetle showing uh, resistance to lambda silothrin from Brazil, again uh, diamond back moth from China. So, like that the number of insects went on increasing showing resistance. Similarly, in India the resistant report was started from as I said earlier Singara beetle from uh, against DDT from Delhi area. Then in case of paddy ecosystem rice leaf folder showing resistance to two OP compounds chlorophyrifos and quinalfos and then cotton bollworm helicover parmigera showing resistance to both OP compounds and then spotted bollworm showing resistance to carbamate again in the cotton ecosystem. So, like that 
the list went on increasing day after day. The ARAC insecticide resistance uh, action committee they have compiled the 14 top countries where the number of cases of uh, insecticide resistance have been reported. If you see this particular graph USA dominates with uh, 2400 species of insects reported having resistance to various groups of insecticides followed by Pakistan and we are fifth in the ranking having around uh, 450 species uh, showing resistance uh, to insecticides. Then in terms of uh, groups of insects also they have categorized diptera recorded maximum number of um, species having uh, shown the resistance to insecticide followed by lepidoptera and homoptera. We need to understand why the resistance develops in insects that is the reasons for uh, developing resistance. I have listed some of the important reasons here. First and the foremost is continued and frequent use of pesticide that is over exposing a particular pesticide molecule for a pest. So, applying uh, the principle of selection pressure the insects started developing resistance. Then use of application rates below or above than the recommended ones particularly the lower recommendation has its own impact on resistance development simultaneously higher dosage also has a, a major selection pressure for a particular uh, insecticide. Then whenever they spray poor coverage of the particular pesticide in the treated area thereby there will be always possibility of uh, the survival of uh, the insect species wherever the treatment or wherever the spray is not uh, covered. Then frequent treatment for insects having large population and have got shorter life cycle. One of the classic example is cotton white fly. White fly can complete its life cycle in 14 days and more number of generations can take place. To manage for white fly people started applying repeatedly almost once in 3 days they started applying which resulted in higher selection pressure and leading to higher level of the insecticide resistance. Then failure to incorporate non-pesticidal control practices. In a given ecosystem whenever you see the insecticide resistance people forget the other um, methods of pest control they only think of insecticides which is another major problem why the continuous development of insecticide resistance took place. Then simultaneous treatment of larval and adult stages with single R related compounds. Say in a given ecosystem for example in red gram if you go on applying the OP compounds belonging say for, for example monocrotophas, chlorophyrifas, quinalphas they all belong to OP compounds and their mode of action is also same. So if you repeatedly alternate the insecticides belonging to the same group uh, in this case OP compounds naturally the selection pressure for the particular compound increases thereby the resistance development is much faster. And lastly the insect is also a living organism you know genetic mutation and inheritance takes place because of uh, the continuous exposure there is a genetic imbalance in the insect a physiological uh, adaptations uh, take place various uh, mechanisms particularly biochemical mechanisms that the insects has developed to detoxify the toxic uh, compounds of these insecticides that is how these are all the major reasons why the insect develops resistance. Then uh, more important uh, in the chemical uh, component uh, of uh, pest management how to overcome this resistance which has been developed. Various uh, simple strategies have been recommended first and the foremost is use of judicious and recommended dose of insecticides. Then most important is you know as I already said insecticides have different mode of action different target site of action different cross resistance considering all that knowledge we have to use insecticides having different target sites different mode of action then as I said insecticides belong to different chemistry alternate use of chemicals which have different mode of actions will certainly slow down the process of selection of uh, resistance to a particular compound. 
then use of cultural practices which are the basic uh, tactics in pest management which can be incorporated and then um, we can reduce the selection pressure for a particular uh, insecticide. Then one should understand the life cycle of the insect when exactly the egg stage is there, when exactly the larval stage is there. The early stages are more vulnerable for pesticide application. Looking to this, you need to target your application co coinciding with the early stage of the insect. Use of insecticide mixture is one of the immediate answer for our farmers. You know, when one product is not working, certainly combination with another product, for example, synthetic pyrethroid in combination with the organophosphorus has a synergistic effect on the mortality of a helicover pine cotton ecosystem. So, insecticide mixtures also is one of the answer in IRM strategy. Then we need to use some of the synergies in the form of simple uh, oils, sesamum oil and then sunflower oil or some specific uh, uh, piperinol butoxide. This is one of the important uh, detox because all these oils and PBO, they detoxify the enzymes which are responsible for resistance. So, such oils and the piperinol butoxide, you know, addition can overcome one of the important problem of insecticide resistance management. And lastly, we need to conserve the beneficial fauna. For example, in a given ecosystem like paddy, spiders play a major role. Considering the spider fauna, if there is one spider per plant that can devour almost 15 to 20 BPH adults in a given day. So, when this is there, why to go for pesticide application? If you avoid pesticide application itself, the insects which have developed the fauna, the BPH which has developed a resistance to some of the insecticides will be taken care by these uh, uh, predators. This is how the resistance can be managed uh, in case of um, uh, insects. Thank you.